We're not there yet, but down the road, this could be the biggest discovery of humanity. In July of last year, NASA released an image of a rock taken by the Perseverance rover. The Perseverance rover landed on Mars in 2021 and has been roving around ever since. It's located in a really cool area right here. This is the Isidus Planitia, which is a plane located within a giant impact basin. The impact was from an object around 200 kilometers in diameter, which is about 20 times larger than the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. It's just absolutely huge. The basin is about 3.9 billion years old, which is incredibly old, but it's actually the youngest major basin to be formed on Mars. This area of Mars has volcanoes and at one point almost definitely had water, so immediately it's just geologically fascinating. Now at the edge of this basin is another smaller crater called the Jezero Crater, which looks like this. It's about 45 kilometers in diameter and just by looking at it, you can assume it had water. I mean, there are clear fan deltas and scientists think that the crater itself was filled with water. And everything we know about life on Earth tells us that where there is water, there is usually life. So for all of those reasons, NASA chose this site for the Perseverance rover, specifically around one of these deltas where there was running water and clays and minerals being moved around in the past, an area where if you're looking for life, you should pick. The rover itself has multiple cameras, and it's also the first rover to bring a sample caching system to Mars that's collecting samples to hopefully be returned to Earth someday. So far, it's collected 30 samples, and sample number 25 is the one we're looking at. It's named Sapphire Canyon, and this sample could be, could be, the first evidence of life on another planet. This sample and image were taken in July 2024 and pretty much immediately released to the public. They figured out a lot right away. In the sample of this rock, the rover found it contains organic compounds. These white stripes are large calcium sulfite veins, and between them are probably bands of hematite which is very common on Mars. But these veins also contain olivine, which forms from the crystallization of magma. That's very cool, but not unexpected for an area where there are nearby volcanoes and processes to move things around. But if you zoom in, you can see white polka dots with black rings that contain iron and phosphate. NASA is calling them leopard spots. We've never seen this on Mars, but we have seen these kinds of things on Earth when there's a fossilized record of microbes living in the subsurface. The chemical reactions that cause these spots can be an energy source for microbes. So basically at that point, NASA was saying, here's what we found. We're trying to figure out any possible thing that could cause this. And for the last year, scientists have been going through this data and trying to figure it out. And now there's a press conference and here's what they said. We put it out to our scientific friends uh, to pressure test it, to analyze it and go, did, did we get this right? Do we think this is signs of ancient life on Mars? And after a, a, a year of review, uh, they've come back and they said, Listen, we can't find another explanation. Um, so this very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. They're basically saying that it's not only possible, but becoming increasingly probable that this is a biosignature for life. To be clear, it would be a biosignature for ancient life, not that life would necessarily still be there, and it would be microbial life, so tiny, tiny life, but even tiny life is aliens. The spots on the rock really could have been left behind by a microbial life if it had used the raw ingredients, the organic carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus that we're seeing in the rock as an energy source. And there are ways to produce the spots without biological reactions, including sustained high temperatures, acidic conditions, and binding organic compounds. But they honestly haven't really found evidence of any of those things happening here, which just means kind of by process of chemical elimination, what we have left as an answer is 
is that there was microbial life on this rock. Does that mean no geologic processes could have made these spots? No. We just, at this point, don't know what could have. But we do know how microbial life could have. On this specific rock, in an ancient river valley that has organic matter, crystallized magma, and an energy source for microbes. To make things even more interesting, this rock is one of the youngest sedimentary rocks that the rover has sampled. Scientists kind of thought that signs of life would be in older rocks. So was Mars habitable for longer or later than we thought? Or maybe older rocks also have evidence of life, but Mars has made it more difficult to detect. And is there any chance that Mars still has life? I don't know. I'm optimistic. I don't think it would just be on the surface like this. Mars lost pretty much most of its ability to sustain life on the surface when it lost most of its atmosphere. Mars didn't have a strong enough magnetic field to sustain its atmosphere, so now it has the remnants of what it once had for an atmosphere. Solar wind has just blasted it. But I do think, personally, that there's a chance for life underground on Mars. We suspect that some of the water escaped into space, but some, and potentially a lot, moved underground. I think it's possible that life moved with it. If this ends up being life, how does this change our idea of the probability of finding life outside of the solar system? I feel like this is a huge shift from viewing life as rare in the universe to potentially so incredibly abundant. It would mean of the eight planets in our solar system, 25% have life. There are 400 exoplanets within 10 light years of us. If 25% of them have life, that's 100 planets with life close to us in space. We might not only not be alone, but we might be absolutely surrounded by life. There's just so much left to learn. Originally, the plan from NASA was that there would be another mission to Mars to collect all of the sample that this rover took and bring them back to Earth to study even more. And there is a sample of this, sample number 25. Unfortunately, the Mars sample return mission would cost about $11 billion, which is huge. But it also could be the biggest discovery of humanity, and we've never had a Mars sample return mission. It could also cement NASA even more as the world's leader in astrobiology. And when you think about it, it is less than 1% of the current government budget, so do with that what you will. For now, we will make do with the science we have, which is telling us that it is more and more likely that this is our first evidence of ancient life somewhere other than Earth. And NASA has released the data, so you can dive into it and see what you find as well. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, Earthlings and Aliens, and I will see you in the next one. 